It's one of the British Army's most specialised and secretive units. The Pathfinders are trained to be the first in to enemy territory and are often parachuted in on missions to recce, capture and kill. Former Captain David Blakely is a veteran of such, mi such missions, having been deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan and before that to Sierra Leone and Kosovo, where he says his work became so sensitive it could have triggered World War III. He came in to tell me about a book of his experiences, Maverick One, and began by explaining the Pathfinders. They are a unit, it's about 36 fighting men who work in six six-man patrols and they are drawn from across the whole of the armed forces. It's not just the parachute regiment. There's engineers, signalers, logisticians, and guys from a whole range of corps and infantry regiments. And um, these guys, you, you, you volunteer for the selection course. It rivals that of the SAS. It's the same route, it's the same terrain, but it's a shorter course. And if you get through and get into the unit, you then go on to do the halo skydiving course, which, which is amazing and you build up to doing it from extremely high altitude um, about the height of Mount Everest wow. and you do it at night in your team and then eventually you start to do that in training and then and then potentially for real behind enemy lines. Just tell me about when you went into Kosovo. Um, I went into Kosovo with with one para and we received orders um, to go into Kosovo from Macedonia and seize the APON, the, the, essentially the airfield there in Pristina, and deny it to Russian forces who were storming through for, uh, from Serbia. And Which we, is why you alluded to it could have been a World well, War yeah, III well, no, 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 absolutely, and that's you know that's not to be, that's that, that's not a joke or an exaggeration. What actually happened was we were the point platoon of one para, who, and this is my first sight of the Pathfinders because they were going in just before us. We gave orders to go to the airfield. The blades were turning on the Chinooks. You know, the adrenaline was pumping. We briefed the route with a pilot, and we were getting onto the back of the Chinooks, and the mission was actually called off in the end. Um, General Jackson uh, was the head of K4 at the time. He called the mission off. He actually disobeyed an order from General Wesley Clark because he spoke to Tony Blair, um, who was the Prime Minister at the time, and he said, if we go in, we're going to end up, we're obviously going in head on with the Russians. There's going to be an engagement. And this mm. could re start in World War III. And so the whole operation was, was called off. But that was confusing for us because, you know, do you obey all orders or are there certain orders that you think might be too controversial and you disobey them? Tell me about your work in Afghanistan because uh, you had to actually uh, meet warlords, didn't you? What were you doing exactly? We went in before Swedish special forces, before Danish special forces or, or anyone like that. So there's no real infrastructure there. There's no, you know, Camp Bastion or whatever. You know, you're on the ground and you're having to you know, create intelligence and find out what's going on. But I ended up in a situation where we were working with these warlords. We were inside a fortress and we were surrounded. There was a bit of a standoff, but then one of them managed to grab an SA-80 and he held the SA-80 to, to my head. And so my heart is kind of doing 150 beats a minute or more. And what we had to do is try and defuse a situation. And what we realized is, you know, if you fight fire with fire, it doesn't go anywhere. So I had to kind of defuse the situation and look him in the eye. And eventually the guy's commander said, said leave it, lower the weapon. We got the weapon back and thankfully we weren't taken hostage because we could have had another situation like Operation Barris in Sierra Leone where a group of soldiers were surrounded and, and taken hostage. It must be very difficult, given your experiences, to have left the forces and to fit into civilian life. I joined the forces young and the intensity of what I went through for, went from Northern Ireland to Kosovo, to Sierra Leone, to Afghanistan working with warlords, to eventually war fighting in Iraq. So there was a progression of what I was going through and I, you know, I served for about 10 years. So I, I think that helped me, but you, you know, I, I, really, I really miss the unit. The Pathfinders is the, you know, the best thing I, I did and I'd encourage anyone who's, you know, who's perhaps bored or frustrated with what they're doing, if they want to do something much more demanding, much more exciting and in my opinion rewarding as well, to volunteer for it, just ring the Pathfinder platoon up, they're very approachable, they want you to join, they don't want you to not join, they need mm. people to keep the machine alive.